Looking for cheap and reliable College 25 Ultimate Team coins? Head on over to MMO EXP and use code Poodle at checkout for 5% off your order. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another CFB 25 video. And in today's video, I'm going to be going over the top 15 recruiting mistakes that you need to avoid in Dynasty mode. And of course, before we do get into the video, guys, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. As always, like the video, it helps out the channel a lot. Comment down below if you have any questions. Subscribe if you're new, guys. I hope you guys have been enjoying the videos. And we're on the road to 30K, so I would greatly appreciate a sub. And if you haven't already, check out my Twitter down below. Follow me over there. You can send me your dynasty. You can ask questions. I'll rate, I'll rate your program, whatever you want. Just hit me up over there. And if you haven't already, check out Underdog. Get ready for the NFL and upcoming CFB season. The first thing you want to avoid is going over your hours week one. Week one is so important and you do not want to go over your hours. So what I always recommend doing is dividing the 35 target mark by the amount of hours you have. So for instance, every scholarship costs approximately five points you can see here when you want to go scholarship on them you have up to 35 in week one not saying you should do 35 but you want to make sure you have at least the opportunity to do so and of course there are some instances where you may apply a scholarship and then take it off and lose the five so what i always like to do is do 35 times five and that's the amount of points you need to save which is 175 points subtract that from your total and that's the amount of hours you do have to scout scouting costs sometimes 20 sometimes 30 it really depends on the packages you have but when scouting just make sure you keep at least that 175 mark and in doing so you'll make sure that you are safe to go ahead and at least have 35 potential scholarship players and if you want to save a little bit more you can because of course you may take a scholarship off and need the extra points the next biggest mistake is not offering a scholarship right away so you want to be doing is when scouting and you find out that they're a green star right always scout them green star scout four four star player green gem make sure you offer your scholarship right away i know so many people who are like oh wait maybe i'll see if i want them see what the interest is scholarship right away interest is king and jump starts are king in this game you want to be making sure that you are offering your scholarship as soon as possible if you believe that you want to fight for this guy jump in as soon as possible you got to make these decisions week one i cannot tell you the amount of people who i've talked to who are like my biggest mistake this season was I should have, I didn't handle my scouting week better. My biggest mistake was waiting a week to jump into that race. My biggest mistake was not putting the hard slot on early enough. Make sure you are getting ahead of everything in this game. Jump starts in this game are key in recruiting. Honestly, big programs win a lot. It's going to be hard against some of them, but the biggest thing is getting ahead of them. If you start hard selling earlier, if you get a scholarship earlier than a big program, even a one-star team could beat out a big program for a recruit in that aspect. So make sure that you are scouting, of course, and getting that. The next thing to avoid is fighting for players who aren't interested. I know a lot of people who love, to, they see this right here, like I'm gonna get into this race. There's a lot of interest here. Now week one, it's kind of okay. Week one, you could test your luck and try to get into it. This is at least a bit of a closer race, but you can't even see yourself. But like a guy like Wit, you know you're three, you know you have a chance. This guy's a bit tougher, but especially as the season progresses, you're gonna get to a point where you can clearly see that you're behind like right away. Like this first week's in advance and you're gonna see you're at like number eight and that like Georgia, Wisconsin, and maybe Michigan in this situation have a huge interest lead off rip and you're so far behind. Do not spend your entire season throwing the hard sell, throwing the send the house, scheduling visits, because you're just going to be wasting points on a recruit that you already have a low chance to get. So that's why I always recommend sticking within your pipeline and players that are interested in you, because these players are going to be a lot easier for you to just apply great methods and stay ahead of everyone else. Another mistake you don't want to make is not checking out your recruiting packages and some of your other packages right off rip. When starting a dynasty or when recruiting, always see what packages you have. Always see if there's any available skill points to use. A lot of people may go in going for a running back and a wide receiver, but you don't have any packages for them. So you're going to be out, you're going to be out recruited by other big programs or other programs that actually have these packages. Make sure that you're utilizing and staying within what you have. Of course, you can go for other players. I never recommend not doing that, but make sure you see what packages you have and know where you stand know that you may have extra points you may find out while doing this that you actually have extra points to spend on a player so sometimes you may think it's just 50 and not realize that you actually had the extra 10 or the extra 20 for the linebackers you may have the extra 10 for this guy you may have this for that guy you may have less scouting time so understand that d linemen take less time to scout that means that with this i only got to hit it two times instead of three that's 10 points saved so maybe i want to be utilizing a lot of d linemen scouting because i know that i can efficiently check out more players there versus another position that I can't. So just make sure you're always checking your coaching packages, go around the whole ring, check them all out, your program, your CEO, see what you have, and it'll make it a lot easier to plan your attack. You wanna be a planning. So the next thing is when you do reach the top five on a player, you are able to offer them a visit. Now avoid this mistake at all costs. I see this so much. As you guys see here, right? You have a pretty big lead. You could probably go ahead and go, you could, you could throw a visit there, but remember visits cost 40 points. They cost points. When you toss 40 on a visit, that's one less player that you can almost send the house on. So keep in mind, if you want to try to maximize how many recruits you get or build up your class, 
Sending 40 means that you can't offer another player that week, pretty much, right? That means you have to take off 40 off a player that you may already have maximized all your hours on and potentially lose that player, or you have to just avoid offering other players. I don't like that. So when offering visits, it's so important to take a look at your race. So in this instance, you have a lead, you're probably safely gonna get this guy if you keep your track, but just in case if you wanna offer a visit, make sure you're doing it accordingly. What I find a lot of people do is this, they would do this to be like, okay, you know, Vanderbilt, that's a pretty easy game week 13, or, oh, I want those points for Alabama and they'll book it week 13. You know, they'll find what they need. Okay, good, they booked it. Keep in mind, you have a steady lead here. A lot of recruits that you start from week zero with will recruit before week 11. So please avoid scheduling your visits late in the season unless absolutely necessary. Now, if you are late in the season and you're fighting for a recruit late in the season that you started recruiting later against other people, that's fine. But when you're starting with your first set of recruits, do not offer week. I see this so much. I see guys like TCU will have a visit for week 13. Meanwhile, the recruit's going to be way over by then. So do not just be throwing your recruiting points away because then, then you look back in the season and you see like six, seven, eight different visits you scheduled and none of them hit. And it was like, that was such a waste. That was 10, that was 400 total hours I could have allocated elsewhere to a player every week, you know? So do not be making that mistake with visits. The next thing with visits is don't offer visits on players you have no chance on. Again, so flip this, let's say we're, we're TCU. If you're TCU or even the Longhorns, you offered a scholarship and you see the LSU got a major boost on you already off rip. It's in the pipeline of this area, that area, right? Or Baylor, you may see like, eh, it's pretty low. I'm pretty behind. Especially when you start to notice that you're like in the top three and they're really ahead, or you're in the top five and they're really ahead. When you know you have no chance, don't offer a visit. I've noticed that too, is a lot of times you'll see a thing like I said, TCU, they'll have that difference, right? LSU versus TCU. And they'll go ahead and throw a visit on week 10. Not only are they breaking the last tip, which was don't offer one that far ahead when the recruit's gonna be over by then, but also you've now just allocated 40 points on everything. Not only are you wasting 50 points on a hard sell on a recruit you may not win or you're likely not gonna win, you've now tossed another 40 at it when you could have just started putting that on another player that actually wants to come to your school. So definitely don't be doing that. Here's the next tip. So if you look here, DeAndre Gore, no one else has offers on them. I have a huge lead. This is one of the most guaranteed locked in prospects ever. Do not over pursue players you know you're gonna win. So I do like to make sure I lock out some teams first because you, you like, oh, maybe Georgia can still come in. I do like to get it into like the top five first. Once we advance, we get into the top five and you lock those top fives and you only see what you're working with and there's no offers. What I like to start doing is maybe pulling back a little, right? Maybe I'll send the house, but that's it. I won't throw the 10 on. That allocates me back 10 points elsewhere. And then as we keep going, I may take off more points. I may just start rocking with contact friends and family and letting it rock with that, right? If there's a space for it, I may only rock with 10 because what I want to do is I have this four stars locked up, right? I like him. He's a great player. No one's fighting me for him. That's great. What I could do is once I'm in that top five with a huge lead, I'll put on the 25. I'll take all, I'll get that 25 back. Then I'll go to another guy that maybe I have a huge lead on like a significantly large lead or I'm near commitment and I have a huge lead. I'll take off another 25 there. And then I can go ahead and go to this guy right here and I can get in on this race and I can start putting max, you know, max allocation towards them. I can now get two players for the price of three players for the price of one. I took 25 off of two guys and combine them for a hard sell attempt, or I should say a full send the house, to a new player that I couldn't get in before because I was low on hours. This is especially helpful for smaller schools potentially that have some easy recruits, and especially for bigger schools that are trying to get this insane class. The thing you wanna avoid is falling for the green ticks. If you look above my head, you can see the tick marks. There's one there, two there, four there, and five there. A lot of people think that these are drawn to scale and they are not. I did an in-depth video on this, so make sure to check that out if you wanna know more about the ticks but understand that these do not matter. Some people say, okay, send the house is five ticks, right? And that's great, that's, but that costs 50. If I did 25, 10, and five, that's only 40. I actually saved 10 points. And if you add them all up, you'll see it's four and you can get two and you can get one. So that comes out to a total of seven. That's seven total points. That beats the two ticks on the send the house. So why would I spend 50 ever? It is not drawn to scale. So you may think that adding all these actions, right? Adding all these things in there is the way to go. Look, and it's not. It, it, go, it goes in this order. I think social media, DM the player and friends and family are complimentary things. Like when you're ahead a lot and you want to dial it back. When you want to just see if you can get some interest and see where you stand. When you want, when you have 60 max points and you're already doing a full, I'll send the house, you want to add some more in this case, right? I do not think these are things that you want to stack up to think you're getting more because you'll quickly notice when you do this, you'll start to fall behind very quickly when a hard sell will skyrocket you right to the front. So do not fall for the green ticks. And this goes across everything with visits, with everything else. The ticks are not drawn to scale. They just show you that to send the house is the most effective of the bunch. It does not show you that four plus two is better than five. So keep that in mind when recruiting. The next thing is taking a player off the board. 
sometimes a player can decommit. So let's just say in this instance, right, on one of these players, let's just say you're, comp you're competing for all these guys. And there's this one guy that you lost out right here to Texas A&M. You lost the guy and it shows it on your board as Texas A&M, kind of like this lock right here, right? You're locked out. It'll say a Texas A&M logo. T typically, you think to take him off. In a lockout situation, you can. In a time where you where you have just a guy that got committed somewhere else, there's a chance that their deal breaker plays into plays a role here. So if you look at where my webcam is on the bottom, where it says pro potential and all these things, you'll notice that there's a lot of different deal breakers. Some may have championship contender as a deal breaker. Let's say a team beat you out for this recruit Bradley Witt, but just barely beat you out and you were second. There's a situation where the team that beat you could go on a complete losing streak and miss the playoffs. And when they miss the playoffs, their championship contender drops down to a C. And in this case, you need a B minus. So that means the player could potentially decommit. And you'll actually notice come national signing day or end of the season, this guy will recommit, drop his verbal commit, recommit and recommit to you or another team below. So if there's a commit that you really wanted and you were super close on and they have a deal breaker that potentially could be impacted by in-season actions, make sure to just keep them on your board because you never know. So the next thing you're going to do is checking your point allocation week to week. People think that you just set it on the top thing and you let it run. While that can be true in some instances, you want to be rechecking every week because you'll quickly find that there's ways to adjust your plan of attack every single week. So we have 50 on all these guys right here, right? So here's the thing. This guy we're so far behind on. He's gone. We could just get rid of him, right? Doesn't impact our points. Keep going through our list. Right end. You notice here this Wade guy, we fell behind so far. What People might just keep rolling through. You're wasting 50 here. Instead, take that 50 back. Get rid of that guy. You're not going to win that one. You're probably lost. I want to take that 50 back. You can now find a new guy, go to prospect list, and go see if there's another guy in the four star here that has you in their first interest. You may see a few guys that actually still want you, regardless if you're not offering them yet, like this guy right here, Kelly. Go in, make the offer. Another thing is changing your attack, like I said, for leads right here. You may keep 50 on this guy, but look at this. No one's offering him. It's clear no one wants him. You have a huge lead. I may even recommend in this situation either going down to a hard sell right? Obviously you want to hard sell it. And if you want to save even more than that, you can go to contact friends and family, maybe toss a five on there, give it 30. You've now accrued back 50 from the guy you dropped and you accrued back 20 on the other guy. And now you have a total of 70, you spent 50 here and you keep going through. I've done it plenty of weeks where I have a huge lead. I take back twenties here and there. I have a, a bad lead. I take back a full 50 because it's over. And we're very quickly, I've reallocated 200 points and can now get four new guys on a hard sell or send the house. My next biggest tip is over recruiting. You definitely want to avoid this. This is a problem that can cause a lot of issues. So first and foremost, you want to be checking out your roster every year to see what you actually need and then be checking what you are recruiting. You might realize really quickly that there's like these five, four stars and two, five stars that want to come to your team. You, you have a big lead. You got to get them very quickly. You may realize that the two, five stars are right ends and the four stars are right ends and edges. You can't start six edge rushers while you can get in at least like maybe four because you can bench some, you can redshirt some, you're bringing in now six edges. When the season comes to the end of the season, you're going to end up in a situation where you realize I already have two edges here. They're seniors, of course, on two of these, but I have the two edges here that will be here. So that it leaves me with already six. And at right end, I have another one that's seven edges. And then you may even bring in a three star, or four star. So you want to always be monitoring this to see what you have, because right here I have a bunch of good pass rushers at outside linebacker and I have them here. So you're going to notice you brought in six edges and you already have two or three guys on the roster that are staying and you have two guys that may already be starters. So now when you get to the end of the season, you got to encourage transfers. You're going to have to start encouraging players in other positions because you can't get rid of those freshmen. So you may have to end up getting rid of a corner or a safety that you really need or some other players where you need depth. And now you're going to have all these ends. And then the following year, you're going to have to encourage some of those to transfer. So definitely be staying on top of that. Check your roster out, see what you need and rec over recruit what you need. For instance, LSU has really bad corners. I want to bring in a lot of corners and I want to get rid of a lot of these guys here. I'm going to probably encourage a lot of these bottom tier guys here to transfer. I want to bring in some fresh talent there, but I don't want to be bringing in too much talent at a spot that I don't need, right? Quarterback's a spot where you may want to bring in one or two guys every year because you're only going to start one and then you want to back up. So just be careful of not over recruiting. Some people may recruit like four quarterbacks and that's just overkill. The next thing is utilizing all your hours. So if you see in the top corner, we've been recruiting all these guys, right? I've seen a lot of people have boards like this. Five guys, they're going all in on. Once they get these guys like, okay, what do I want next? But they're leaving 720 or whatever hours on the board. That is the worst thing you could be doing because with 720, I can totally go ahead and get like 10 to 15 more guys on my board at a full allocation of points, send the house, hard sell, whatever you want, you, you name it, right? Make sure you're using all your hours. And of course, like I said, with over recruiting, while that does play a role, as you get into the halfway point, you're not going to win all of them. That's the assumption that you're going to win all of them. Let's say you, you go to recruit 30 guys and you only win 21. When you get to the end of the season, you can start to see the guys that you're near the end on and you can just start taking them off. Okay, I already got three ends. I'll take them off. You rather cut back later than cut back earlier. 
So to my last point, over recruiting is in the sense where you've already got four right ends, make sure you don't bring in more. But on the flip side, you also want to make sure you allocate those hours. So you want to be doing both very delicately, which is why you want to allocate those hours to cornerbacks, allocate them places you need. So don't over recruit. Make sure if you're going to over recruit and you're going to utilize your hours, just do it the right way. My next tip is when buying recruiting packages, a lot of people fail to do this. They come into recruiting packages and they buy the quarterback one. They buy the halfback one, the players that they really want, right? Not realizing that these points fully doing the quarterback costs you 20 and that's only enough for one position. Keep in mind, you have a max level of 50 and a maximum level of points at 10 each that you can get. So you only have a certain amount of packages you're going to be even able to buy. So you got to be very selective about how you do this. So with that being said, 20 points gets you one position. 40 points gets you, 40 total points gets you quarterback and halfback. Let's say you want to get even crazy with elite. This is now going to be 32. So this is 64 here plus 40. You're looking at 104 points to maximize your quarterback and running back recruiting. Great. That's a large portion of all the points you're ever going to get and you're only getting two positions out of it. What you wanna be doing is allocating it to positions of quantity. So let's just say you were to do linemen and you were to do linebackers or offensive linemen and D-line, right? D-line is ends and DT. So that's like four starters. And then your O-line is five starters. That's nine positions for a total of 40. And then you add this in, you're at the 100, 104 again. For 104, you'd be able to cover a large portion of your field, five offensive linemen, four defensive linemen. That's nine total players out of 22 that you can get fully maxed out with recruiting bonuses. This goes a long way in maximizing your recruiting classes. This goes a long way in making recruiting easier for you. So make sure you are trying to allocate your points, positions of needs. I'm not saying don't do quarterback, but I'm basically saying make sure, especially when building your coaches, that you're being efficient with it. Next biggest thing is forgetting about players that aren't being offered. When recruiting, you'll notice by a few weeks in that some players just aren't being offered that heavily. So let's say we go to five stars here and you filter. You may notice that this guy only has one offer from Ole Miss. This one has one offer from Arkansas. Make sure you try to get in some of these races. Of course, they could be red gems and they could be bad and that could be why, but make sure you are checking them out. Like if you're at week five, six, seven, and there's some five stars or four stars that aren't being heavily offered and you can see that and you have some extra points to spend, go ahead and take a look. Look at these. These are a bunch of four stars being untouched. You may find a gem that's being unrecruited. And since no one's recruiting them, you can go in lightly on that one. You don't have to spend a lot of points. So make sure you are going through and just seeing what players aren't being touched once you get through your initial round of players that you want. One of my last tips is knowing when to throw the towel in. That is so important. I mentioned it. I kind of hinted at it in other ways. Let's say right here, for instance, like I said, this guy wasn't heavily recruited. Let's say I got in on this race and I offered the scholarship. I did the hard sell. Let's say all that goes well, saw, send the house. And when you go through, this next week goes by, Ole Miss is still crazy in a lead when we get into the top five, and I only have a smidge above that. Why am I going to waste my 50 points every week going to that? It's so clear, like you didn't get a big jump. No one to throw the towel in. And this is even with five-star guys. I've come across a lot. I'm fighting for a five-star for five straight weeks. It's neck and neck. It's neck and neck. Some guy gets a great visit, and they take a big lead near the end. But you already were, you made it that far, right? So you're like, I got to see this through. You don't. You don't have to see it through. It is so obvious when you're not going to win a recruit. It's like, it's mind numbing. Like, you know, okay, it's over. There's really no secret when they have a huge lead on you and there's like one week left to commit, especially when you see the commit bars here and you're all the way over here, just drop it. Cause you can take those 50 now, go to that other players that I said that are being unrecruited and you can just start that process up. Get a head start on some other guys. You can start reallocating extra points to some other guys that maybe you want to just finish off. You want to throw an extra 10 on them. So just make sure that you know when to throw the towel in. So I know this was pretty long guys, but I hope it did help. These were my 15 things that you need to avoid when recruiting in college football 25. If this video helped you out, make sure to subscribe guys. Let's keep it going to 30K. Like if you're new, every like makes this video do even better. So I really appreciate it when you guys like, it helps other people find our channel and you know, learn from these tips and comment down below if you need any help or if you have any other things to avoid, please comment them down below. What's your biggest thing to avoid in CFP 25? And if you want to send me them over on Twitter as well, that's helpful as well. And make sure to follow me there as well if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching. I'm out. Peace.